This is In the Trenches, Broadcast 55. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. Today's guest is Denny Cray, the founder of DizRuns.com. Danny is the founder and owner of DK Fit Solutions, which is a personal training business. And the focal point of it, the focus of it, is that Denny essentially goes to his clients instead of his clients coming to him in the traditional gym setting. So we're going to kind of get into why Denny got into this, why he built this, and how, why he built it the way he's building it um, in, a, in a minute. But first, Denny, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Tom. It's an it's a absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So tell us a little bit of background on yourself. Like, well, tell us a little bit about you. Well, my background is in sports medicine. Uh, my degree is in athletic training. And I, I guess when I originally kind of chose that type of career path, the, the plan was, you know, as a, as a starry-eyed, you know, high school senior or whatever, picking your, your, where you want to go to college and whatnot, the plan was to try to get into professional sports as, as one of the, the, you know, medical staff on, on this, the pro sports teams. Um, and so I, that's what I went to college for. I, I kind of went through four years and, and that was still the plan. Um, and then things kind of, after I graduated, uh, the job I thought I had lined up with the Detroit Tigers kind of fell through at the last minute. Uh, you know, no, no fault of anybody's. It's just the way, the way things uh, kind of happened. And um, I started re, kind of rethinking, I guess. I, I, was, I was dating a girl that uh, turned into my wife. So um, the idea of all of a sudden being on the road for seven or eight months a year, you know, traveling with your team and, and doing that kind of, of thing um, lost a lot of the appeal that it had when I was 18, 19 years old and, and you know, didn't have, have, didn't have any desire to really be settled down. So I started to kind of over the course of the next several years and, and still working in the athletic training setting, working in, in high schools and um, working kind of uh, outreach through one of uh, the uh, physical therapy clinics and, and kind of being contracted to different places to, to do some athletic training work. Um, I, I knew that that wasn't what I wanted to do. That's not why I got into the, to the business. Um, but what I, you know, my original plan was, wasn't also what I wanted to do anymore. So, um, I kind of, you know, used my, my, my education and, and my, my background and certifications that I had and, and was trying to figure out what I could do that would be different, um, from what I was currently doing. And kind of over the course of about a year, year and a half, this idea of why don't I do, you know, some type of personal training, it's still the same kind of sort of thing. Like I'm still working with people, which is what I wanted to do, um, helping them to improve physically and, and, you know, improve their, their health. Um, obviously I wasn't going for the high level athletes anymore, but it was still within the realm enough. But I also knew I didn't want to be stuck inside of a gym all day. Um, so just again, kind of over the process of, of a few months of, of kind of brainstorming and thinking and, and just kind of letting it stew in, in my mind, kind of the, the idea came, well, what if instead of having a gym set up where, where people have to come to me, um, what if I tried a different kind of area, different, maybe kind of a new avenue or a new angle almost and, and become mobile uh, and just go to go to my client's houses or their office or whatever is the most convenient place to meet them and work with them that way. And it, it took a little bit of time. It was a little, took a little, uh, took a little while to, to really gain steam, but um, it's, it's been a blast so far. It's, it's definitely um, a good mix of, of getting being in the box gyms, a gym that I own myself, it's, it's been to have some of that flexibility that, that is allowed by being mobile like that. Yeah. So I, I'm interested by that because it seems like that'd be a cool thing or, or potential, um, you know, avenue that other personal trainers could, could look into, but it also seems like there'd be some, some headaches or some struggles that would go along with that. So tell me a little bit about some of the, I guess, challenges of of building out your own kind of personal training um, company and, and specifically shifting the angle to kind of that, that mobility piece where, where you come to them. Yeah, it's, it's, there's definitely pros and cons. I mean, just like any, any, you know, big type of, of uh, environment to, to kind of be in small, um, you know, for me, I think the biggest, 
um, struggle has been kind of finding and, and cultivating new clients because, you know, when you're working at, at one of the box gyms or even just if you have your own gym, you know, people kind of see the gym and, and realize what it is. And, and if somebody comes in and starts talking to you, um, you know, you have a pretty good idea that they're probably interested in, in the services that you're providing versus for, for what I'm doing, it's, it's a little bit tougher to, to get some, uh, you know, maybe to break the ice a little bit because people aren't necessarily ser- searching me out um, you know, when they're walking down the street or, you know, if you're at, if, if you're at a, a big gym and somebody's just coming in and you see them over time and you kind of develop that relationship with, with seeing them in the gym all the time and, and, you know, maybe they'll eventually decide to, to start working with you that way. So, you know, kind of client acquisition has been, has been slow and, and difficult. Um, but it's, it's also, you know, when, when I start talking to people and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going, I guess, after a different type of, of client. Um, I'm not trying to get, the, the bodybuilders. I'm not trying to get the the people that have, have been gym goers forever. Um, simply because, you know, with with the way my model's set up, I, I can't take enough weights and enough equipment and things like that with me to people's houses that that need lots and lots of equipment. Um, so it's a little bit of a of a way of of having to look at things differently because it's easy to get caught up in the mindset of you need this piece of equipment, this machine, you know, this these heavy dumbbells, a barbell, y- yada yada yada, all the different types of equipment that that a lot of the gyms have. And while having lots of extra equipment is nice and it gives you a lot of flexibility and ability to really do a lot of different types of exercises so that things don't get stale, when you break it down, you can do an awful lot with a couple of light dumbbells, your body weight, uh, maybe a couple of resistance bands, things like that, which is typically the, the only pieces of equipment that I take with me. Um, you know, just enough things that kind of fit in like a, a milk crate, basically, and, uh, and, and I'm able to, to really knowing my clients and knowing, knowing what their goals are, you know, really create stuff that, that works for them with, with uh, the amount of equipment that some people might think there's no way you could get a good enough workout with, with, you know, like I said, just a, a couple of dumbbells and, and maybe a, a resistance band or two. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Diz Runs, <clears throat> excuse me, Diz Runs and, and what it's about and, and the purpose behind it. Well, I started um, the the Diz Runs. I guess it was a blog. I guess really only um, a few, a couple years ago. I guess, and it was basically just to kind of of write about. You know, running's kind of been a passion of mine. I, I uh, maybe about three years ago, I decided that I wanted to um, try to run a marathon in every state, which I'm still in the early stages of that quest. But it's definitely still something that's that's very top of my my list of personal goals, at least. And so I kind of started the blog to just kind of chronicle that a little bit and just kind of, you know, talking about running. And, and I guess maybe if I'm, if I'm really going to be honest, I, you know, kind of had the desire or the, the dream of, of, you know, having one of the, the great run blogs that, that are out there. And, and um, you know, I guess starting a blog in, in you know, t- 2011, 2012, something like that, um, you know, there's a lot, a, a lot of really good blogs out there and a lot of maybe not so good blogs out there. And mine was probably in the not so good category. Um, and it was kind of hard to, to, you know, it kind of got frustrating, I guess, because, you know, you're spending a lot of time writing posts and, and kind of kind of pouring yourself into it a little bit. And, you know, you get two people reading it. And one processing a little bit. And, and the idea kind of came back to, to maybe try to bring that back a little bit. And again, kind of using some of my background and some of my, um, my, my certifications that I have into the personal training realm um, to kind of maybe branch it out into something more than just a running blog and, and kind of make it, you know, a place for, for you know, good information, stuff that's, that's science-based because I'm, I'm, I'm in that um, sphere anyway. So it's, it's a lot of stuff that I was reading and researching on and, and learning about for myself to help myself improve as a runner and, and to maybe try to branch that into something that, that could be um, – you know, I guess right now it's still separate from from the DK Fit Solution stuff, which is my personal training stuff. Um, but eventually, the plan, and and eventually, like soon, the plan is to kind of merge them into underneath one umbrella. And I haven't exactly figured out how to do that, but really to kind of make you know the personal training the, the, of having you know on on two different sides of of uh, the table to really be be brought together under one one big brand or one, one, one name or the other, um, and really kind of go forward to, to offer kind of both, um, solutions in the same place. But, um, it, it like I said, it started out as a passion project and, and just something for fun and it's kind of morphed into something that, that could be part of, of the business, hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's interesting. It, are these, are these both, um, <clears throat> well, you mentioned that was a passion project, but, uh, so then are they, are they kind of like part-time 
part time projects? Are these? Are you doing this full time? I wasn't. Sure. You might have actually already mentioned that, but I, I think I might have missed that. I'm doing the the personal training stuff full time. Um, that's that's my full time gig now. I've been doing that for uh, just over a year and a half on the, on the full time basis, and um, you know, one of my I guess one of my fears or one of my my concerns is that basically that's my only source of income. I mean, my, my wife works, so it's not like we're an only one income family, but I, I don't like the idea, I guess, of, of being completely dependent on just the, the personal training clients that I have. And also the idea that it's kind of hard to scale up because there's only so many hours in a day and, and um, you know, you can only have so many clients in a, in a day between, and again, for me, one of the, the problems is, or not problems, one of the, the things I have to remember is I can't just stack clients one on top of the other because I have to allow time to get from one person's house to another person's house and, and back and forth and whatnot. So um, I was just kind of looking for ways to kind of diversify my income my income stream, I guess, which is what led me into to spending some more time and, and trying to bring back the, the Diz Run stuff a little bit. Um, but definitely, you know, the personal training stuff is is my, my full-time job now, um, even though I'm spending a lot of time trying to build up uh, the, the running side of things as well. This is a pretty, like when I hear this and think about it, I I know some other people kind of in the, I guess you could say health or fitness space, and it seems like a really competitive market to be in. Uh, do you do you notice that at all, especially like in the online space, has that been difficult for you to to get noticed out there um, and get your stuff spread and, and so on and so forth? I think uh, for me, I think I've, it, the health and fitness side has been much more difficult than the running side. I, I feel like the running, the running community, the running, you know, the, the running groups on Twitter and and different things like that, the, the the you know different trending hashtags that are revolve around running on on Twitter and and Instagram and things like that, um, have really been great about helping to share things and just kind of you know kind of we're all I guess you know going in the same direction, so everybody kind of helps each other out. Um, the, the fitness side has been a little bit more difficult to gain as much traction. Um, but also I guess, you know, if I'm honest on the, on the, the personal training side, I haven't been trying as much to gain a, a bigger following outside of my local community because just with the way I'm set up, I mean, I don't really have any online products available. I don't have anything to really market to people outside of, of being able to, to, you know, knock on their door and, and give them a workout in their living room. So, um, I haven't been as, as I haven't been as diligent to try to expand that reach as much. Um, locally, I don't think I've had too much of a problem. Um, you know, as far as, as people feeling threatened by me, um, because most of um, I'm pretty much as far as I know in my area, I'm the only one that does exclusively mobile personal training. So um, I don't think too many people see me as a threat because I'm not going to the gym trying to poach people. I'm not trying to, to steal people's clients because um, if, if you're a gym goer and that's that's kind of your thing, then I'm definitely not for you. So it's it's not I, I haven't notice too many people locally that have really kind of, you know, kind of given me the cold shoulder or kind of, of really seen me as a, as a competitor. And I don't think that I am a competitor. I think that I'm more geared towards people that are, are kind of new towards working out and, and don't know where to start, but, but, you know, maybe have had a, a bad experience at a gym before or something like that. And they just know they don't want to go to the gym, but they know they also need help. And, and I'm trying to offer that alternative. And, and so far, most people have been receptive to it that I've talked to. Yeah, and and now I know you you touched on this a little bit, but I I I, I want to get back into it because I'm really curious about this. So when it comes to that, um, and and where it I guess crosses over with uh, the disc runs as well. When it comes to that, like the marketing and the acquisition of new clients, um, you know, I I, I, mean, I know obviously it starts with uh, with your current client base and word of mouth and so on and so forth. Um, is that essentially the only avenues that you go to get new clients or otherwise, what have you tried and what works and what doesn't, um, that you found when it comes to doing something like this? Because again, I think a lot of people might go to a gym and that's when they pick up a personal trainer. Um, outside of that, I wonder, you know, wh- how do you, how do you reach those people who might be seeking somebody like you? Yeah, d- that's definitely been, um, a, a struggle and something that I've kind of, you know, had to learn and adjust and try something new. Um, d- by far word of mouth is the best. Um, you know, I have, have a, a handful of, of very loyal clients that have been very good to me and, and have really helped me to get to the point where I am now. And, and, uh, they're, they've been very good about just, you know, mentioning me, I mean, you know, people see the, the changes that they've made and, oh, how, how, how have you done that? And they're, you know, quick to, to give them my card and, and, and tell people about what I'm doing. Um, so that's definitely been the best, uh, method for me to, to try to get my, my name out there. But I've also done, you know, joined some of the, the smaller networking groups in town. 
um, you know, we have a, a very big uh, kind of chamber of commerce association. And I, I was in that for a year and it really didn't, it didn't work as well for me because it was almost too big, I, th- I think. And, and um, I think maybe I'm at a point now where I, I maybe could get more benefit from the chamber just because I'm, I'm more, I, I have a better understanding of what I'm doing and, and kind of who I'm marketing towards and, and, you know, more time to kind of put into going to some of the events that I, I didn't have because when I was in the chamber I was still working my other job full time so I didn't have as much time during the day to go to some of the networking events um, but there's a couple of really you know kind of smaller um, networking of, uh, groups in our in our town and they've been great just kind of going in and just getting to meet some of the different people in the community and and um, you know just knowing that that because it's a kind of a smaller net group everybody kind of knows each other a lot better and there's there's a, a handful of people in those groups that are really proactive about not promoting themselves when they're out, but they're but about promoting other people. And that kind of rubs off on everybody else. So it's been great to just kind of be in those groups. And, and you know, you, somebody calls and says, hey, I heard about you from so-and-so and so-and-so. And I was, you know, talking to them about this and, and they just went out of their way to, to, to you know, tell me about what you're doing. And, and that's kind of something that I'm interested in. So um, that's been a big help. Um, a little bit through Facebook, but I, I haven't really done much with ads. And, and of course, as the algorithms and stuff have changed on Facebook, it's been harder and harder to get people to see your business pages and things like that. So um, it's mostly been just through word of mouth and through, um, like I said, some of those local uh, networking groups where it's just kind of stuff in person that, that you know, help everybody kind of helps to, to spread each other's message. And that's kind of helped me get, get the word out a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. So as far as where you're at now, where you're headed, where do you see yourself in about 12 months or where would you like to be in terms of, uh, you know, personal training, but also Diz runs and, and everything you have going on? Well, the, the biggest thing is, and kind of like I said, why I was bringing, a, bringing the, the Diz run stuff back into, into development is to really try to make sure I've got multiple areas of, of revenue. Um, I love what I do. I love working with my individual clients, but you know, I mean, just like any any type of service based industry, there's times that that people, you know, have the the disposable income or the extra income, I guess, to to you know pay for your service and pay for your time. And then there's there's times where, where people's life situations change and they have to cut back a little bit. And and uh, unfortunately, sometimes the the personal trainer that comes to the house is one of the things that they pull back on a little bit. So, um, you know, I'm I'm hoping to to increase more areas of, of revenue through, through the running stuff, um, through the Diz runs side of, of the, the coin and, and bringing in some, some coaching clients for running specifically instead of the personal training side of things. Um, I'm also looking to get into, um, in the next year or so really trying to, to push my way or maybe not push my way, but, but try to get my foot in the door of, of some public speaking type of things. Um, I've got a passion for, for just health and wellness in general and, um, and just sharing and, and spreading that message since there's, there's a lot of people in this country that, that need to hear why it's important to, to worry about your health before you get sick. Um, I'm a big believer, I guess, in preventative medicine or preventative health care. Um, you know, there's a reason that you take your car to get your oil changed every, you know, three or 4,000 miles. And, and yet we don't worry about making sure that we're healthy all the time in our 20s and 30s and 40s. And all of a sudden you're in your 50s or 60s and the doctor says, oh, you know, you got, you got, the, you know, your blood pressure is this, or your cholesterol is this, or you've got markers for this or that or the other. And and you start to to react and try to treat the problem instead of being more proactive in your younger years or or at, at any point to try to prevent some of those things and and um, that's just a message that I that I <laughs> am, am passionate about I believe in 100% and and I'm looking for any way possible whether it's like I said through speaking through being on on podcasts through podcasts of my own through the blog through through whatever to just kind of help to spread that message of of you know, a prevention, an ounce of prevention is, is worth a pound of cure. And, and I think that we forget that sometimes. Awesome. Love it. Well, hey, Denny, we're wrapping up around the 20 minute mark. Um, I just want to give it back to you. Where can people reach out to you? What's the best way people can reach out to you and connect with you and what you're doing? Probably the best, the best way for me, I think is probably on Twitter and, and I've, I've got two Twitter handles, but the best one, the one I check the most often is, is Diz Runs. So it's just at Diz Runs, D-I-Z-R-U-N-S. Um, I'm on it all the time. I, I kind of get sucked down the Twitter wormhole sometimes. So um, if, if you're on Twitter, that's the best place. And then um, either disruns.com or dkfitsolutions.com. But again, kind of more of the focus, I think, and, and especially for people that aren't right locally in town, 
is uh, the, the Diz Run stuff. So um, if, if you're interested in running or, or I mean, anything, any health, anything health and fitness related, you can get me through either of those avenues, but the Diz Run stuff would be a great place to start. And, uh, you know, you don't have to just ask me run questions on the Diz Run stuff either. You can ask me anything health, fitness, anything like that related. And I'm, I'm glad to, to connect and, and uh, you know, just, like I said, help out in any way possible. Danny, awesome. Well, hey, thanks, man, so much for being on the podcast. It was great to talk to you and get to know a little bit of your story and share with my audience. So thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Awesome, Tom. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you're interested in checking out the show notes, just head over to tomworkers.com slash podcast to see our latest episodes. Also, I just wanted to give a quick update to fans and listeners of In the Trenches and specifically what I'm working on right now. For the past two years, I've been publishing books, my own and others, through Insurgent Publishing, my boutique publishing company. In the past six months alone, I've helped four individual authors launch their books to bestseller on Amazon, including Dan Norris's The Seven Day Startup and David Nihil's Do You Talk Funny, among others. And both of those books are still top of the charts months after launch. I've learned two important things from all this. Number one, that people still read books. And believe it or not, they're willing to pay for the good ones. And number two, the $60 billion book industry is only getting bigger and the barrier to entry is only getting lower, which means access to this market has never been closer to the average writer, blogger, or author. It is literally within the grasp of anyone who wants it. But you need to know how to approach it the right way, with patience, with a strategy, and with the right implementation and execution. That's why I've been able to launch so many bestsellers, many that are still top of the charts, because we brought great books to the people who wanted and would pay for them. No slimy sales tactics, just honest, powerful marketing. Now, I want to show other authors and publishers how to do the same. Four months ago, I launched the pre-beta to a new super secret platform called Publishers Empire. In that time, I've helped a dozen authors and publishers start to bring their ideas to life. And with their help and feedback, we've quickly developed what is, in my opinion, the best, most comprehensive publishing training platform in the world. And now I'm getting ready to open the doors up to a few more students. So if you're interested in being part of a tight-knit family of publishers who help and support one another through their writing and publishing projects, if you want access to over 100 HD training videos to take you through the writing and publishing process, if you want access to proven copy and paste book marketing and sales copy, stuff that we've used to launch bestsellers, And if you'd like professional book covers and templates, you could plug your own work into and look like a pro in minutes. And if you'd like all of that while getting the chance to be mentored by me, check out publishersempire.com and sign up to be notified when we launch. That's www.publishersempire.com. I hope to see you there. As always, this is Tom Morcus. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Thank you for listening to In the Trenches. Your creative work doesn't stop here. Join the resistance, the small but growing army of entrepreneurs and artists putting a dent in the world at www.tommorkis.com. Never fight alone. Join the resistance. <laughs>